LCD screens are among the most common devices for displaying information from electronic equipment, such as vending machines, medical equipment, alarms, monitors, temperature sensors, just about anything else you can think of. The most common sizes are 1602, that's 16 characters on two lines, and 2004, 20 characters on four lines. They have 16 solder tags for connecting them, usually with header pins. The I squared C method of connection enables you to connect a screen to a processor such as an Arduino or Raspberry Pi using only two wires instead of the more complicated wiring involved in using the screen alone. I squared C, written I2C, stands for Inter Integrated Circuit and allows multiple devices to be connected to the same two data lines. For this video, let's just look at how to connect a single screen to display some information. You can use either a 1602 16 character by 2 line screen or a 2004 20 character by 4 line screen for this. To use the I2C protocol, an adapter module is used, sometimes called a backpack, because it solders directly to the back of the screen and sits behind it. The backpack is soldered to all 16 of the screen's pins and then has four pins of its own, two for power and ground and two for the data connection. You can buy a backpack separately to fit to your display if you have one. They generally use the PCF8574 chip and have a jumper for the backlight connection as well as a trimmer pot to control the screen contrast. This chip will work with both sizes of display and you can also buy screens with the backpack ready fitted, usually advertised as I2C ready. Setting up an I2C display involves two main stages, connecting the hardware and configuring the software. To show the hardware setup, I'm going to use an Arduino processor and a 16 character by two line screen, along with four male to female DuPont leads. These are really useful leads to have around, as they'll connect most modules or breadboards, and you can solder them directly to a PCB if you want to make your project a bit more permanent. Firstly, I'll give the screen some power from the Uno, using the 5 volt connection and ground. Keep in mind though that the Arduino is limited in how much power it can supply, so for a more complex circuit you'll probably need to run some power from a supply line separately from the Arduino board. There are then just two connections for the data, the SDA serial data line, which goes to Arduino pin A4, and the SCL serial clock line, which goes to Arduino pin A5. Having connected the screen to the Arduino, it's now time to look at the software, which in Arduino is called a sketch. To use the I2C and LCD screen, we need to add two Arduino libraries. The wire library, which is included in the Arduino software, and I'm going to use New Liquid Crystal library by Francisco Malpadida, which will need to be downloaded. And I'll put a link for this in the description for this video. To add a new library to your Arduino setup on a PC, download the zip file, open the Arduino program and go to the sketch menu. From that menu, choose Include Library, and then Add Zip Library. Navigate to your download and click to add it to your library's folder. Now let's move on to create the sketch to try out the display with I2C. At the top of any sketch, it's good to include any acknowledgements followed by any included libraries. These can be added either by typing in hash include followed by the details of the library or by using the sketch menu to include a library. But if you do this, it may bring in references to multiple libraries in a folder in which case you can delete those you don't need. An Arduino sketch most commonly consists of some initialization at the start, followed by a more formal section called Setup, and another section called Loop where most of the action happens. At the start of the sketch, we need to know the address of the display. All I2C devices have an address, as multiple devices can be connected to the same two data lines. It could be a clock, a temperature sensor, or anything else, and the processor needs to know which device to send the information to. For the I2C backpack chip, the PCF8574 or 8574A, the most common addresses are 0x27 or 0x3F. If you don't know the address of your display, you can quickly find it using the I2C scanner sketch. And if you want to change the address, you can do this by joining the solder pads on the backpack adapter. Again, if you're not sure of the outcome of this, you can check the address you've created using the I2C scanner. With your display connected, you just upload it and open the serial monitor, 
and you'll see the address of any devices on the I2C bus. So, with the address established and the two libraries included, I'm going to put in a line to create an object for the display called LCD, and in the bracket that follows are included the address of the device, followed by a series of numbers that tell the chip which pins are being used. As the sketch continues, we now just need to refer to LCD to give the screen instructions or information to display. For the actual setup section of the sketch, I'm going to get things started with the statement LCD begin, followed by the screen characters and lines, 16 by 2 or 20 by 4 followed by a comma. LCD clear then does exactly what it says, it clears the screen and moves the cursor to the top left. I also need to put in the instruction set backlight high, which turns on the backlight. To try it out, I'm going to type LCD print and then put some text in quotes inside the bracket following, for example, LCD 1602 I2C. And as ever, I need to remember to put the semicolon at the end of the line. If this is in the setup and there is nothing in the following loop, the screen should just display that text continuously until I upload something else. Here we go, success. Now let's use more than one line of text. The display lines are numbered starting with zero at the top. If I type the instruction set cursor to zero zero, then the text will start at the beginning of the first line. Let's try that out by uploading the sketch again. Now if I copy and paste and then change the instruction to read set cursor zero one and change the text, uh, let's try easy to set up, we should see two different lines of text. And here it is. That worked well, but you're unlikely to want static text on your screen all the time, so let's leave the basic instructions in the setup section and add the information for the display to the Arduino loop. Now in the loop, I've added two lines of text followed by a delay of two seconds, after which the screen will clear and two different lines of text will be displayed. After another two seconds delay, the loop will start again and the original text will reappear. Let's upload and see if this works. That's fine, and of course you can add text or information from a variable, such as temperature or humidity, or you can control what is displayed by a key press or other input. If you want to display information from a variable, maybe you have temperature down as T for example, then simply put the variable in the brackets of the LCD print command. Remember to tell the screen where to put the temperature though, with an LCD set cursor command. Other useful commands include clear to empty the screen, cursor to show where the cursor is, and no cursor to turn it off again. Blink makes the cursor flash, and no blink makes it solid. No display turns the cursor off, and display turns it on again. There's a similar process for connecting an LCD display to a Raspberry Pi, and I hope to be making a video about that soon. Meanwhile, I hope this one was useful to you in completing your project, and we'll add some notes in the comments below about the text and code that we use, and that's also present in more detail on our website. Thanks for watching the video today, we'll be making more soon.